brought down $1,600 for any advance at 1600 On October 7th, Swan Galleries is having our fourth African American fine art auction. The sale has over 100 lots of works by African American masters from Aaron Douglas to David Hammonds, and it features three collections. The first collection in the sale is a group of works from the estate of the artist Docs Thrash from Philadelphia, purchased by a Philadelphia family, the Nowaks. The second is a remarkable group of abstract expressionist paintings from the collection of Judge and Mrs. Edward R. Dudley, a prominent New York politician and his wife who knew Hale Woodruff, Norman Lewis, and Charles Austin very well. The third collection we're featuring is from the estate of Lawrence P. Dorsey. This is the second offering we've had from his estate, a prominent Brooklyn Gallery owner and dealer. This fourth auction of our new department covers a whole century of African-American fine art achievement. We have several great examples of each of the major periods from the Harlem Renaissance to the WPA to post-war abstraction and political art of the 1960s and 70s. The first work I'd like to talk about is a great example of the Harlem Renaissance by an artist who epitomizes that period. It's Aaron Douglas. And Lot 1 is a group of four woodcuts, Emperor Jones, from 1926. These four uh, images are different scenes of Emperor Jones and the character from the Eugene O'Neill play. Aaron Douglas was commissioned in 1926 by Theatre Arts Monthly to produce these. They were going to be illustrations in the magazine and the artist later printed these set of woodcuts and this is the first time we've had any Aaron Douglas prints at auction. In February we had an exceptional group of original works by Aaron Douglas, including a gouache study for this series. Now we have the set of four prints that gouache was the study for. And these four prints uh, were printed from blocks that he made in the 1920s, but it's a more recent printing from the 1970s. But it's still a very scarce uh, group of work. They really epitomize the Harlem Renaissance, the style, in addition, right now at the Schomburg Library in Harlem, Aaron Douglas has a major retrospective of his works and included in the exhibition is another set of these prints. Lot two is a small bust ahead of a young boy by Augusta Savage. And we're dating it from the late 1920s, to early 1930s. This is a wonderful work by this Harlem Renaissance sculptor, and it's the first unique piece that we've had by this artist at auction. And it's a beautiful portrait of a young boy, fired terracotta clay that was later painted. This Augusta Savage piece really represents the way she worked at this period. She did a lot of studies of heads of young children. One of her most famous pieces is another head of a young boy, the gamine, which is a head of a young boy with a, with a cap. And so we really have a glimpse of the way she worked in clay, doing very small, sensitive portraits. And this is a wonderful example. In this sale, we also have other Harlem Renaissance works, including another sculpture by Augusta Savage, Lift Every Voice and Sing which is a small model of her famous sculpture for the World's Fair. In addition, we have Harlem Renaissance Photography by James Van Der See and Addison Skurlock. The next major period for African-American artists was during the WPA. In the late 1930s and early 40s, African-American artists, for the first time, had the chance to produce a large body of work and one of the great African-American printmakers from this period was Dox Thrash. Dox Thrash was a Philadelphia artist who produced a great body of work 
in prints. He's known for inventing a new technique of printmaking, carborundum printing. But in this sale, for the first time, we're showing a large body of his work from his estate. And it's really showing another side of his work, which are his watercolors and drawings. In Philadelphia, there was a great number of artists and some very prominent collectors. The, the most prominent Philadelphia collector, Albert Barnes, is well known for his world-class collection of Impressionist paintings. The Nowaks, a, a prominent Philadelphia family who were friends of Albert Barnes, had begun collecting works of WPA artists. After meeting Doc Strash and befriending him, they had the chance to purchase his estate from his wife. And now in the sale, we have four great examples of his work on paper, including a great self-portrait that was exhibited at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Lot 15, Doc Strash's self-portrait, is a remarkable drawing. It's not only a WPA self-portrait, it's a, a study by the artist for a series of prints that he did that were self-portraits. And it shows the artist as a confident young man. Uh, it's a very modern pose in a semi-cubist style. And he really um, has given us a glimpse into his own psyche, the way he works as an artist. This is really one of the few WPA self-portraits uh, that we have encountered. Um, uh, Doc Thrash did do a number of self-portraits in printmaking, but this is really um, the beginning of that. In addition to the Noah collection, we have two other prints by Doc Thrash. One is a scene of Philadelphia and another is a quintessential WPA scene, uh, Doc workers at the shipyards of Philadelphia. Lot 20 is Ellis Wilson's machine shop. This painting really has a quintessential WPA scene of factory workers, an African American and a white worker working together on a steel press at a time during the war when this joint effort was celebrated. And in this painting you have the two workers uh, working under a poster that shows an image of an African American and a white man together. Ellis Wilson worked in factories in New Jersey while he was applying for a Guggenheim Fellowship in the, in the early 1940s. After the war, with his fellowship, he was able to travel to Haiti. And there he did a whole body of work, which he's known for today, including a funeral procession that most people uh, recognize from The Cosby Show. This painting has another interesting association. It was lent to the Senate office of Senator Barack Obama, and this painting was a favorite of his and hung behind his desk.